Hello friends, today we are going to see about normal incidence at a plane conducting boundary. When an electromagnetic wave is incident on a perfect conductor, what happens? So assume that this is medium one, it is having the conductivity zero and some permeability and permittivity and assume it is a free space. Now, let us assume the perfect conductor is medium 2. This is having these parameters. Now, when an electromagnetic wave, so it is propagating in this direction, that is positive x direction, and the electric field is in x axis, that is positive x axis, and the magnetic field, the dot represents, it is coming out of the plane. So, when this mag electromagnetic field is incident on the perfect conductor normally, that is with 90 degree, yes, what happens? Let us assume this incident wave as EI and HI. Nothing is going to transmit it because the perfect conductor is having the conductivity as infinity. So nothing is going to be transmitted. Whatever comes in, entire thing will be reflected back. So let us assume this wave as ER and HR. So the, the electromagnetic wave that is reflected will take the uh, direction of uh, minus, that is A in, uh, that is in minus x, x, x direction and dot represents it is coming out, that is positive y direction and the electric field is in minus x direction. So let us see it one by one. So first is the electric field incident wave. So this is the expression for an incident wave, that is EI of z is equal to the electric field is in x direction and this is the magnitude and since the incident wave is in positive z direction, I mentioned it with minus j beta 1 z. Now, this is the reflected wave expression that is ER of z is equal to the same x axis and the its magnitude is ER0 and it is after striking the perfect conductor it will reflect back and it takes the negative z direction that is why I have changed the sign that is plus j beta 1 z. Now let's find the total electric field intensity in medium 1. Okay, In medium 1 we have totally incident and reflected wave. So, when we add up these two, we get the total electric field intensity. So, just substitute these two equations in this and we get this. Now, we want to find the ER0. Just apply the boundary condition. The boundary condition in this end, we are going to substitute z is equal to 0 because this is the boundary. z is equal to 0 in this equation. What happens is, e i naught into e power 0 that is definitely it is 1 plus e r naught e r naught into e power 0 is 0 right sorry 1 and it is equal to 0 at the boundary there is no tangential component so if we simplify it e r naught is equal to minus e r naught so this thing i am going to substitute in e r naught so i got the, like this minus E I naught. Now I have, I am going to take uh, A X and E I naught common outside. So uh, I got like this. Now I can relate this with the, with the formula 2 J sine theta is equal to E power J theta minus E power minus J theta. But I have to do some modification here. This e power plus j term should come first. So I am going to take the minus outside. So now it is fit for the formula. So if I substitute the formula, I will get like this. So this is minus ax ea naught 2j sine beta 1 z. So this is the total electric field intensity in medium 1. Now we are going to find the total electric field intensity in medium sorry total magnetic field intensity in medium 1 
okay so let's see it one by one this is the magnetic field incident wave so incident wave it is very similar to the electric field a y it is the direction of uh, of uh, oscillation of magnetic field is y so uh, a y this is the magnitude and this is the, um, the propagation that is the incident wave is propagating in positive is a direction yes now i uh, have i have to do little modification i'm going to replace this h i naught in terms of e i naught with only the relation the help of a relation should that eta is equal to e by h from this we can write h is equal to e by eta so with the help of this relationship i am going to replace h i naught that is h i naught is equal to e i naught divided by eta okay so yes yes so e i naught divided by eta okay now let's write the reflected wave so h r of z is equal to it is very similar to the incident wave what we can do just change the direction of propagation that is after incidence everything will be reflected in the negative z direction so just change the sign minus 2 plus that's enough now let's find the total magnetic field intensity just adding these two incident and reflected wave to substitute the two equations here now we can e uh, easily take a y eta uh, e i naught by eta one in both terms as common mode right yes now uh, we can relate this the formula two cos theta is equal to e power j theta plus e power minus j theta yes plus is there so cos so if i substitute here i'll get like this so this is the total uh, magnetic field intensity i've got now let's find the instantaneous electric field instantaneous the word instantaneous means we have to find it with respect to t with respect to t also that is e1 of z comma t that is your instantaneous electric field we have a simple formula that if we find if we take the real of what we find before e1 of z into e power j mega t we can get the instantaneous electric field so just substitute e a uh, e one of set here what we have derived just before and e power j omega t just replace it with cos omega t plus j sine omega t so e power j omega t can be replaced like this now what is the meaning of real whatever inside the bracket we have to take only the real part so let's examine this uh, a first term contains one j that is this term is an imaginary one this one is real so when i multiply imaginary with a real one what happens imaginary into real becomes imaginary yes so don't consider this let's check the second expression second term is j multiply with j j into j is j square that is equal to minus 1 so there is no there won't be any imaginary term so we can multiply it and take the real part yes so just write the same expression like this ax now we have a uh, minus ax and j into j j square equal to minus 1 so these two minus will be cancelled out and we can write the remaining ax a naught 2 j can skip it uh, sin beta 1 is it into sin omega t similarly we have to do it for instantaneous magnetic field so here's the expression real of h1 of z into e power j omega t just substitute h1 of z and the e power j omega t yes here uh, similar to the previous we have to check for the real what and all the things will be real right so there is no j term here so this thing is purely a real one this is real so real into real when we multiply we get a real term so this is selected right 
Let's check the next one. It is imaginary. So real and imaginary, it will be imaginary. No need to check it, right? Now, so we can directly write it as ay, a naught i eta 1 to cos beta 1 into cos omega 2. So we got in instantaneous electric field and instantaneous magnetic field. Now using these two expressions we have to plot the values. So how will you plot using this beta 1 is it? Yeah, in uh, electric field I have beta 1 sine beta 1 is it. In magnetic field I have cos beta 1 is it. With the help of beta 1 is it, I am going to plot. I am going to give various values of beta. So for electric field, if I substitute beta as 0, minus 5, minus 2 pi. Or in common if I, I will say it as minus L pi. Since uh, the electric field holds sine beta 1 is it. Yeah, if I substitute everything, I'll get 0. Yes? And instead of that, if I substitute minus pi by 2 or minus 3 pi by 2 in this sine beta p, what I get is e of e1 of z comma t as maximum. Yes. Similarly, for magnetic field, I have cos term. Yes, cos beta 1 is it in the expression. So, if I substitute these things 0 minus pi and all I'll get the maximum value and instead of this if I substitute these values minus pi by 2 minus 3 by 2 in this uh, cos thing I will get 0 yes so let's plot the diagram so this is the boundary uh, conductor on the free space boundary so while plotting how will plot we have to give the zero thing that is this is zero this is minus pi yes sorry this is uh, minus pi by two and so on we have to plot like this so this is the so this is minus pi by two minus uh, pi minus three pi by two minus uh, four pi no uh, two pi minus pi pi by two and minus three pi so this is the plot so uh, after plotting what we have to do check it for 0 minus pi minus 2 pi electric field will be 0 so for 0 minus pi minus 2 pi the electric field will be 0 right okay. so let, uh, and what happens to the maximum thing minus pi by 2 so minus pi by 2 this maximum minus 3 pi by 2 maximum yes maximum yeah so assume that the wave is incident like this after Hitting the perfect conductor, everything will be reflected and it takes the opposite direction. That's it. Okay. Now, similarly, for magnetic field, if you plot this, yeah, the same thing. This, this is the zero place. This is uh, minus pi by 2 place. So, what is hap happening? In zero, we'll get the maximum value. We'll get the maximum. Yes. For pi by 2, minus pi by 2, I get zero. Yes, just the reverse of the electric field. So this is minus pi. So for pi minus pi, I get the maximum. And for 3 pi by 2, I get 0. So and it goes up. So on the whole, what happens? So if the wave is incident like this, everything will be reflected. And this forms standing wave. Standing waves are not propagating. It won't propagate. So, when a wave is incident normally on the perfect conductor, it produces standing wave and it will not propagate. Thank you.